Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to our another episode of What's New in Dynatrace Observability Clinic Series. Just like in the previous session, we have Kali today. He will be talking about the new platform features introduced in version 281. Hi, Kali. I hope you had a nice time off. Hi, Berkan. Yeah, it was really nice. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year to everyone, and I'm happy to be back. Perfect. And if you are ready, we can move on to the next slides and have a look at the agenda items for today's session. Thank you. So, as always, the first parts will be about our playground environments. Any Dynatrix user can access and use it, use our environments to explore capabilities. The next and the main focus of this session, product updates. Uh, Kale here said uh, he will be talking about the product updates, the new platform features released in the version 281. And the last part will be about the feedback channels, community resources in the end of the session. Next slide, please. So if you don't have a Tyrantest user account yet and you want to access the Playground tenants, you just need to sign up for a trial. As you see here, that's the first QR code and also the URL that you can see easily to access the sign-up form. And the below of that uh, code that you will see that you can, if you have already have an account, you just need to go and discover our playground environment. That's all. Also, you can find the link here and at the, at the bottom of this page, there is a GitHub page which contains lots of tutorials and hands-on training materials, which can help you to engage with our platform. Let's move on to the next slide, please. Okay, I think we, uh, I'm done here. Let's get back to you, Kale. Thank you, Berkan. Yeah, so let's talk about the release notes 281. So as usually, uh, the new versions are rolled out automatically to Dynatrace SaaS clusters every two weeks. And uh, in this um, session today, we'll focus on 281. So let us jump right into the new changes. Uh, so first of all, let us mention the breaking change here. So it's super important for you to know that with end of February, the current SAML certificate will expire. So we strongly recommend that you update this um, before February 28. And um, if you want to know how to do it, please check out the documentation. We have a really exact protocol on what you need to do. And if you face some doubts or questions, let us know. Uh, how can you let us know? Um, for this, let me jump right into the, um, the Chrome browser. And with this breaking change, um, when you have any issues, just feel free to use the live chat, which you can find here in this support um, button tab, so to say. And here with the live chat, you can easily start asking questions about this um, migration or about any other Dynatrace related issue or question that you may have. As mentioned, this uh, migration of the SAML certificate is pretty well documented. So you can find here an exact protocol on how to get the new SAML certificate and how to exchange it with your IDP provider. Okay, sounds good. As far as I see, the certificate has a lifespan of five years. Mm -hmm. So the new certificate will be valid until October 16, 2028. Yep. And after February 29, we will st start signing new SAML messages using the new certificate. So this mm -hmm. is also that well documented in this page. Yes. Okay, looks clear. Yeah, and maybe one more thing to mention, what is the SAML certificate for? So it is really about securing the communication between Dynatrace and your identity provider in a SAML transaction. And if you don't update this, it may result in the inability to log in to your environment. So you really want to ensure that this is migrated in a timely manner. So really, really, really be aware of this and please don't forget it. Also, one important message that we already sent a message to the administrators, I think that a couple of weeks ago, I don't remember the exact date, but you can also check your emails and talk to your account management teams, just to be sure that there's nothing missing here. Mm -hmm. All right. 
then let's move on to the next uh, section, the infrastructure observability section. So in this context, we have one interesting new feature enhancement. It's on the Kubernetes node page. And uh, in this uh, Kubernetes node page, we added a header information that includes a link to the host page. So the goal is to have this direct link so you can easily go back and forth um, when you are on the node um, Kubernetes node overview. And with this link, you can simply um, access it and you will have the one agent host perspective as well. Okay. And I think from technical perspective, the host metrics are based on the agent data and the not screen metrics are based on active gate Kubernetes monitoring data. So that's why that you see mm -hmm. these are connected on the, on the node page. Exactly. Yeah. It will be nice that so to the transition easily. Mm -hmm. I think it was possible in the properties before. I don't know. And uh, I guess that it was under properties. Now it's in under important properties, which you see as a main mm -hmm. overview of the nodes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Then there's one more change in the infrastructure observability context for AWS metrics. We changed the default value to null in order to align this with the um, with how the data is represented in CloudWatch. So before it was set to zero, now it's null. So it's it's good to know about this, and it's also possible to technically change this back to this uh, to the uh, zero representation in the active gate that holds the data from your AWS CloudWatch API. Uh, but now with this new um, enhancement or this new configuration, it is really mapping one-to-one -one with the CloudWatch representation. Okay. Looks good. I have nothing to add here, so it takes place itself. <laughs> All right, then let us go to the platform context. On the platform, we have the one agent site masking enhancement. So what does this mean um, for you? So we at Danitrace, we of course take the responsibility to safeguard data seriously. And we really give our best to give you all the different means to configure this on different levels, on, on capture, on storage, on display. And with this one agent side masking, you have one more layer where you can configure uh, the, the, the data um, the data capturing. So you can directly uh, configure that specific data points are not sent to the Dynatrace servers at all. Uh, in this case, email addresses, query parameters, uh, or financial or payment card numbers or IDs and other numbers. So you can really disable this and say, okay, please one agent, don't collect this, don't send it to the servers if you want to do so. This is pretty good feature to actually that's, and we do the configuration on the one agent and to re-emphasize that we don't send the data to the server. It's not like we send the data and do the configuration on our end. It is all stays on either source or the resource. So this is mm -hmm. pretty that's useful. Yeah, exactly. And and maybe one more point to mention here is that you can do this setting globally for your environment, for your tenant, or you can do this for a particular process group. So you have a fine-grained configuration approach as well. And also we need minimum agent version here, I guess, 277. Yes, exactly. All right, then let us jump into the world of DQL. We have a new DQL command, it's called join. Maybe some of you are already familiar with SQL. So what this join does is that it allows you to combine the results of two tables. So it merges the records of two tables and it forms the new table by looking for, for keys that overlap, so to say, so for the same key value. And um, this, those two illustrations that you can see on the slide that I'm sharing really um, show this well. So on the left side, we have the join command that represents the inner join that you can do. Um, but we also have the left outer join uh, possibility that you can configure to, um, yeah, to, to 
have the, the left side um, as well. Uh, if there are no, not any matching records on the right side. But we will look into an example then um, in, in, a, in a few moments. Also, the, the good part is the decal. While the specific comments or the syntax might differ, the concepts of the data, for example, in this case, the join command are common in various data analysis and database technologies. So this yeah. is also uh, good for the, to the transition. In doing this, uh, the query analysis in Dynatrace, mm -hmm. and we already have the example as you mentioned. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Then we have a similar addition to the time series command for metrics in Grail. So you can now include the union parameter. So if you don't include it, the union parameter per default it's set to false, and this default behavior it resembles um, the SQL inner join behavior. So when you um, use the time series command to combine two different metrics for, let's say, hosts, it will um, output the records uh, for the hosts that have both metrics. Um, if, for example, you have a metric where some hosts have values and some not, you can use the union set to true uh, to obtain the SQL outer join behavior. And um, let us look into con into concrete examples, how this may look like. Um, in the next slide, uh, we have here two tables where we have um, three different hosts. We have host one, host two, and host three. And we want to combine um, two metrics here, the DT requests failed and the DT requests success. But we can see that not all of the hosts have uh, metric values or time series values. So what happens if you use the default, the union false parameter, is that when you um, yeah, put those values together, you will have um, an output where only uh, that the record um, is um, showing where the key, in this case the host, is available in both tables. So we can see here in the table one, the left one, we have host two, and in the right one we have host two as well but we don't have neither host one nor host three in both tables. So this is the reason we don't see it in the in the output table. And when we set union to true, we can see that no matter, um, um, that, that it doesn't matter if, if the host is um, represented in both tables. So um, all of the hosts will be shown and for the values that are not um, uh, available, it will just, um, have a series of null values that we can see here on the on the lower part of the slide. Okay. All right, then let us uh, jump into the uh, live demo for this part. So let us start directly with the configuration of data privacy settings. So we have here an extensive documentation where you can see how you can configure data privacy settings on different levels. So we have here three levels, the masking at capture, masking at storage, and masking at display. And today in this uh, release notes presentation, we will focus on the one agent side masking. And uh, we have here an, a documentation that describes um, where to set it, how to configure it. And what you basically can do, as mentioned, you can configure this on the global, on the tab uh, tenant level. I'm sorry for this, uh, it kicked me out. Let me just go back to this settings. It's interesting. Let me just refresh the page. Yeah, so this is where you can find the settings. Um, it's under uh, the preferences and the data privacy uh, link. And here you will find the one agent side masking. So this is really the data that is at the source. So where you have your one agents installed on your um, on your host and your machines, and you can tell Dynatrace, tell the one agents that you don't want to capture um, those uh, data points like email addresses or uh, payment card numbers. So this is where you can configure it. Per default, it's disabled. So if you feel like you want to not capture this data, you can do so here. 
and you need to of course be aware that if you disable this so if you if you disable the capturing of data uh, you will not have it um, ready to analyze it or to to um, slice your data based on on those information so um, yeah just be be aware what happens when you um, reconfigure uh, the, the 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 settings here the same also on the process group level so um, in addition to the global level you can uh, configure this uh, for individual process groups so you may have teams that want to have a, um, a stricter data privacy setting and maybe some teams um, they don't have um, high um, expectations in terms of data privacy uh, they can have then different configurations that um, allow the capturing of those uh, sensitive data points so yeah this is important to know for you all right, um, then let us also look into um, our notebooks for today, where we will go through the um, DQL command, the join command. So um, this um, join command, um, as mentioned, it uh, merges the records of two tables and forms a new table. And uh, in the context of the join command, which then gives you really many different possibilities to analyze your data um, by bringing different tables together. So with all those different dimensions in Grail, you will have a myriad of potential use cases that you can accomplish with the join command. And, and the exact joins that you can do with the join command is first of all, the inner join, which looks for, um, for um, overlapping key values uh, in a key column. And as we can see here, for example, we have your two tables. It's just um, a really simple table to understand what happens in the join command. Uh, with the default inner join behavior. So we have here two tables with key A, B, C and the value one, two, and four on the right side. And we have here a second table with key keys B, C, C and the values 10, 20, and 40. As we can see in the first table, uh, we have only the key B and C that overlap with the uh, keys in the second table. As we can see at B and C and C. And as a result, when we join those two tables, like we do here in this Grail query, so we join the first table with the second table. And what we get as an output is that those records that match in terms of the key, so B and C are combined here. And we can see that uh, with the right key and the right value, we joined from the second, um, from the second table the B, C, and C values, 10, 20, 40, with the values 2 and 4, as we can see here, 2 and 4. So this is the inner join behavior. We also need to define the key or the, the column that we join on, which is in this case called key column. And this is the result. If we now look into the left outer join, so this returns all the records from the left side and the matching records from the right side. And it also returns um, those records um, from the left side that don't have any matching records on the right side. Uh, so what does this mean if we look down here? So we have here from the left side, all the values A, B, and C. And we can see that um, for the um, key A, we don't have anything matching on the right side but still we are including it in the output um, with having those missing values um, um, designated with null values, as we can see here. And we still have the other um, keys, B and C, as those are matching with the right table. All right. Okay, and also as always, we are going to put this notebook link in description, the video description. And also you can find, it, I think, the URL within the presentation. Mm -hmm. and anyone, again, has a Dynatrix account can access and see these examples directly from the notebook. Exactly. All right, then let us go back to the uh, presentation slides. So we have in the context of digital experience, uh, one detail change that may be interesting to you. Um, for the private synthetics uh, locations that you have uh, deployed on Kubernetes or OpenShift, we have increased the CPU limit for a synthetic location 
component called the VUC worker container from one to one point five. Uh, from one to one dot five cores. Uh, for most of you, it, it will not make any difference. Um, why did we implement this change? We want to avoid excessive CPU throttling uh, for the synthetic VOC worker containers on heavily used locations. Uh, so a small detail that um, eventually is there for improving the performance of your private synthetic locations. Also, as a side note, that uh, that we have these worker containers, I think that is responsible for execution of browser monitors. So this is that briefly that will be increase the performance of those locations. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good. Then let us also have a brief glance into the into the product news. So we want to point out here um, our carbon footprint app which you can use to optimize your um, hybrid cloud carbon um, footprint. So um, as we know, climate change is a super critical topic for humanity. Um, and yeah, we can see this by, by multiple reports and studies. And it's really interesting to know that data centers or, or cloud computing um, has a similar contribution to a global energy consumption and uh, emissions like the, the global airline industry, as we can see with 2% of all emissions um, coming from um, the global airline industry, but also from, from data centers or from, from the cloud um, domain. And so as the impact is um, significant and um, it's a significant contributor to this, to this issue, uh, it, it's really um, important to think about optimizations and to contribute to um, um, yeah to to fixing this issue or, or at least uh, helping out to reduce the, the impact. Um, so from this moral perspective, um, it's it's super important. But also from from the lawmakers, as we can see with new measures by the European Union with the um, new ESG reporting rules that will also apply to many US uh, companies having subsidiaries in the European Union. So this is really something that is, is um, expected uh, from the lawmakers that um, in future companies uh, provide reports about their uh, energy uh, consumption or, or carbon emissions. And with this, we um, at Dynatrace want to give you the tool that, that you can use to have those, um, to have this transparency for those reports, as well as to have actionable insights in terms of how you can improve uh, your, your contribution to the, the emissions. And this is a really important topic that's not easy to cover in, of course, in the session. And so you have a lot of resources here. I think that's, as you also put Kale in, in slides. The mm -hmm. only thing that uh, maybe we can say that we, as you know, that we collect all these metrics via one agents and the metrics are like CPU, memory disk network and so on. And we put them into a conversion formula, which considers the geospecific energy factors to calculate the uh, equivalent, that's the carbon equivalent and the energy consumption. And we do this and we develop this with the guidance by the uh, sustainable digital infrastructure alliance, as far as I remember from the notes. So these are also explained in the hub details in the application details. And Kale also will go through the application itself to mm -hmm. see the results. So this is uh, briefly, this, uh, it's, I can say the collaboration it's with the uh, responsible authorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned already um, the small demo that I want to make, maybe not a demo, but at least a uh, mention it uh, at this place that you can look into so when you have your um yeah your environment where can you find this carbon emission this carbon footprint app so when you go to the uh when you look for the hub app this is uh the the app the hub app where you can find um yeah solutions for all your um use cases you can look for different apps including the carbon footprint app so you can see here for the different solutions different apps and you can simply look for this carbon 
impact app. And um, usually it's not installed if you have, haven't used it used it before. In our case, it's already installed. But if it's not installed, you just click on this Carbon Impact app, you install it, and then you can um, yeah start using it, configuring it for your needs. And when you open it up and have it configured, you can see the carbon footprint measured in kilograms of C CO2 in a specific time period of three days, for example, with a comparison. You can see optimization recommendations. You can look if some of your hosts are idling or, or inactive, where you can discuss if you can um, disable them, shut them down uh, in order to uh, limit the energy consumption and the, and the carbon uh, emissions, and you can also see which hosts are identified for scale down. So this is just a small glance into the app. I don't want to go into any details. You can also click through many um, different uh, views and tables here and really go into the details, uh, into the application level, to the code level to see which methods consume how much CPU where you can improve in order to reduce the carbon footprint. But all of those details you can find well summarized, well structured, presented by our uh, principal product manager um, responsible for this Carbon uh, Impact app in on our YouTube channel, who discusses it with Andy Grabner. So it's a really extensive video video of uh, over 30 minutes where you can see all the details for this app and how you can leverage it for the new. Um, a new, for the new law coming and the new regulations for carbon impact in the cloud space. All right. One more product news that we want to make you aware of is um, the topic of CICD. So how you can use and leverage Dynatrace to boost the reliability of your CICD pipelines uh, which eventually then gives you more time to focus on innovation. So we have here a three-part blog article series that you can check out. In the latest one, our colleagues focus on how to leverage Dynatrace in the testing stage of the CICD pipeline, um, how this looks like, the testing stage, the combination with Dynatrace, and what you get as an outcome. You can find this information in the blog post online available to you in the public internet where you have um, everything described by our two colleagues and as you can see when you scroll down you see here the different um, the, the, the information for the testing stage the challenges that you may face and how you can tackle those with Dynatrace. As mentioned this is part three of this um, automating CICD pipeline series for the testing stage. And we also recommend to check out part one for the build stage, as well as part two for the, for the deploy stage. All right. And this, this brings us to the end of today's uh, yeah, Dynatrace release notes uh, series. I hope that uh, you, you will like it and that it will help you. So feel free to ask any questions or provide feedback in the community or in the live chat. We have also different webinars that you can check out on Dynatrace University. As mentioned, we have many different super interesting videos on YouTube as well that can help you boost your challenges that, that you can tackle with Dynatrace. And again, I repeat myself, please use the live chat if you have any questions or wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kade. Also, that's, uh, I just like to emphasize the importance of these conversations that for us, that we start all these conversations with our that's users directly in the chat, and we can easily spread, spread those uh, messages internally. So it's not like first step of the conversation that for you, it is, it can be really a central location to have a smooth conversation for that long, uh, type of that messaging or short messages even that it will be easy for you to get answers in a couple of minutes. And it is it is really important that uh, for all of us to have a, uh, how can I say that, a more effective communication channel. So that's briefly that I just wanted to mention. And in university, you can find several webinars from starting from beginners to advanced, uh, to the advanced level. And this is 
one other tech, important resource uh, for, for you. And also, as always, please share your feedbacks, ask your questions in our community feedback channels with our product manager, with us. So that's, I think that's uh, briefly that all the resources we have. And I'm just thinking that I think I think it's, we are all we are all good set for now, Kade. So thank you very much again for your efforts and the time. Thank you, Bergan. Uh, hopefully, let's see you in the next release. Hope too. See you soon. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.